don't know if you've noticed, but it's become pretty obvious to me that we have a critical thinking problem these days. I mean, to be fair, we've had a critical thinking problem for the entirety of human history, but as each year passes, it becomes more and more disappointing for me to see people, especially young people, rushing to embrace conspiracy theories and pseudoscience, especially as it pertains to far-right violence. Take the recent events in the UK, for example. If you missed it in late July, someone went on a stabbing spree at a yoga and dance workshop, murdering three children and injuring eight more kids and two adults. The organizer of the event, Leanne Lucas, was one of the people injured as she helped save the lives of several of the kids. As for the attacker, he was only 17, and so as a minor, his identity wasn't immediately released. That didn't stop right-wing agitators on social media from immediately blaming Muslim migrants, because of course they did. It was honestly either going to be Muslim immigrants or trans high schoolers, one or the other. I don't think this kid was either of those. He ended up being a British citizen. But despite that information eventually being released, the alt-right rioted, throwing rocks, shouting racist epithets, and pushing burning wheelie bins at police, which... I mean, to an American ear, wheelie bins makes that sound very funny, but in fact, it was all pretty bad. Uh, they even tried to burn down a hotel where asylum seekers were staying, which is horrific. And a lot of these people are currently being charged. Uh, we did get this clip out of the whole incident, which is an instant classic. Sorry, I just, I really can't get enough of this. These riots were the inevitable result of abject hatred and a lack of critical thinking. And that's why I was happy to see that one immediate response on the part of the UK government has been to say that they're going to overhaul the school curriculum in order to integrate more basic critical thinking skills. The education secretary told media that she pledged to look at embedding critical thinking skills across lessons in many subjects, with a view to teaching children how to spot and reject extremist content. English classes might be used to scrutinize newspaper reports, comparing their style and language to fake news, while pupils may be taught how to identify fake news websites via their designs in computer lessons, and math students could learn to analyze statistics and context. This is great news, and it's an idea that I have been pushing for several decades now. One of my old skeptic sister sites was School of Doubt, where teachers from across many disciplines discuss ways to incorporate critical thinking into their curricula, whether that's second grade gym class or 10th grade music. Because the cool thing about critical thinking is that it is relevant in pretty much every field at pretty much every age. That was an awesome site full of awesome people. Do you remember a time before three or four social media sites became the only sites people would visit when someone could just set up and fully fund a popular educational blog aimed at making the world a better place? Crazy times. Anyway, I know that science is considered the ideal place to learn basic rules of logic and separate in fact from fiction, but Personally, I always thought that my own critical thinking skills were best honed in English classes, Latin classes, social studies classes, uh, thanks to the teachers I had in those classes, you know, critically evaluating fiction to tease out various meanings or translating body poetry and discovering fun new but old double entendres or learning how to compare and contrast sources, historical sources, and putting aside my own biases about what I'd previously thought had happened throughout history. So yeah, I'm absolutely on board with the UK's new curriculum, and I do believe it's going to be a big help. And it just so happens that a recent study from researchers in Spain supports this idea. A large-scale study and six-month follow-up of an intervention to reduce causal illusions in high school students was published this month in Royal Society Open Science. And yes, as you may be able to tell from the name of the journal, this study is available in full for free online. And as with all of my videos, the link is in the transcript, which is at patreon.com slash Rebecca, or you can find it linked in the description box below. 
or wherever the description box is. I don't know. The fact that this is open access is awesome. Even awesomer is that this study is pre-registered, which means that before they even conducted the study, the authors submitted everything that they were going to do. And that's good because it means once they got their data back, they couldn't massage it looking for any statistically significant result. They could only do exactly what they said they were going to do, which gives us a much stronger result in the end. Even better, this study was sort of a replication of a previous much smaller study conducted in 2013 that investigated whether or not a class on critical thinking could help stop adolescents from falling for causal illusions. That is basically that classic problem of mistaking correlation for causation, which I've gone over many times on this channel. Basically, it's assuming that two events are related when they actually are not, or they're not related in the way that you assume. Like the classic example of the number of pirates in the world decreasing at the same rate that global temperature has increased, which might imply that piracy is the solution to global warming, which is an idea whose time may have come. Uh, you know, just thinking about how many streaming services have increased their rates and in inserted ads recently. Just throwing it out there. Anyway, that previous study did find evidence that teaching adolescents about causal illusions works to protect them from falling for that fallacy. But that study only included a convenient sample of 62 students, so-called because they weren't randomly selected. They were all kids who had already signed up for a robotics class. The researchers also didn't follow up to see how long these effects lasted. This new study was much more expansive. They started with about 300 students in a pilot study and then moved on to a test of 1,668 students across 40 schools. The researchers started things off by demonstrating to half the students how easy it is to fall for this fallacy. They had them wear special rings made of space age technology that was meant to improve them both mentally and physically. They pulled out the old power balance bracelet trick, which was really big in the early 2000s. Those were those rubbery bracelets with holographic stickers on them. And people in malls would demonstrate their power using old carny tricks that make it look like you, the mark, are much stronger when you're wearing it but you aren't, it's just a little rubber bracelet. So the researchers fooled the kids with these rings and then they revealed the trick. They explained how it all actually worked. They point out in the paper that some research suggests you maybe don't need to do this step to de-bias someone against causal illusions, but they wanted to in part because it's fun, which I love because they're totally right. You know, this is exactly the kind of mind blowing demonstration that would have really captured my imagination as a kid. And so it's likely that without it, fewer kids would be engaged in the rest of the lesson and fewer kids would really understand how this lesson might apply to their future selves. The researchers note that without this part, this lesson would just look like a regular science lesson, and that's just not going to intrigue as many kids. After this demonstration, the researchers taught the kids how proper controls would have allowed them to see that the rings didn't really work. They then got some more examples to demonstrate, like... If you take a medicine and your cold goes away, how do you know that it was the medicine doing its job and not just the natural cycle of your cold ending? Meanwhile, the control half of the students just did general science lessons on astronomy or nanotechnology, stuff like that. Finally, all the participants were asked to play a little game to figure out if a made-up medicine was effective or not for made-up patients. They could choose whether or not to give the medicine to a made-up patient and observe if the patient got better, and they could do that however many times they wanted. One medicine they tested was a placebo, and the other one was actually effective. In line with the previous research and their own hypothesis, the students who got the magic ring training, as opposed to the general science education, were far better able to correctly identify the placebo while still being able to understand that the real medicine really worked. In other words, they were just the right amount of skeptical without tipping over into just assuming everything must be a scam. The best part is that six months later, the researchers went back to these students and they gave them some more problems to work out. They found, sure enough, the kids who got that training were still significantly more likely to be able to apply what they learned to new situations, though, of course, there was a bit of drop off. 
I love this study, and it reinforces for me the importance of our schools not just assuming that science class will handle basic logic and critical thinking. The ability to recognize our own biases and control for them spans all disciplines. It's bad enough that many science classes that I took growing up were just focused on rote memorization, but it gets even worse if the curriculum assumes that that's where all the critical thinking skills need to be taught. We need to teach kids to read, write, watch, play, and think critically all the time. Because if we don't, they're going to keep getting sucked up into this pseudoscience alt-right bigot pipeline. We can put a stop to it now, and I'm very glad that the UK government has gone on the record to say they are taking action. Now, I know I normally end with a clip of Indy being cute, but I'm sorry, I just can't today. I have to see that Nazi getting cranked in the balls one more time. Remember, kids, learn to think now or tomorrow. This could be you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.